Hey everybody, I hope you are as excited as I am to dive into this classic high stakes poker hand. I remember watching this one vividly as I was rooting for my friend Tom, who was representing all of us online players on the big stage on high stakes poker. He was having a great performance and in this particular hand, he builds a huge pot against the most intimidating player at the table, Phil Ivey. Let's see what happens. This is high stakes poker. This show has been all Phil Ivey. I wonder who's going broke that. next. Phil Ivey has over a million dollars now. Respect. There is the last one. We're going to find out about the respect card right now. This is the Here moment. Here it comes, 40,000. <laughs> Wee! From there, you don't know what to expect at any time in your life. It's total wild card madness game with there. There is about 18,000 out there already. Both Phil and Antonio are goading Juan into raising here, hoping that he doesn't. But he does. And enter the wild card madness card. That is that a, it's a 25? I don't even have one of those. So we start this hand with Phil Locke raising to $3,900 with ace-nine offsuit. Someone on the loser side. He gets called by Alezra with ace-seven suited. He gets called by Ivy on the button with ace-six suited. Overhauled minor grani with jack-three suited. Very loose of Daniel there. And Tom Dwan in the big blind with nine-eight suited. Sees a perfect squeeze opportunity with a really good three-betting hand. And three bets to about 29K. Oh. Cool 25,000 rays with eight nine of spades. <laughs> He's the best. He just, he just torture me. When, so when I try and get in with one chip, he puts in two. That might be the best. So it's a one blue chip? Yeah. Worst lay down I ever make in my life. See if Mr. Ivy puts in that blue chip. Nope, it's five white chips. Juan misses. Phil Ivey's got a huge draw, nut flush draw and inside straight draw. A little $45,800 continuation bet. Everybody folds except for Phil Ivey, and we head to the king queen 10 flop with two diamonds. With these two players heads up, Phil Ivey flops the nut flush draw and a gut shot. Tom flops the bottom end of a gut shot, really no hope but he's representing a strong hand and he's going to keep representing one with a pretty big bet size here. He's betting almost 46K into this 70-ish K pot. Ivy is analyzing the hand. It's very possible that Tom Juan has a set. He raised 25,000 before the flop. He knows he's not going to get Tom Juan to lay down a hand like ace-king or aces. How much you start this hand right there? About 750. But he does have a big draw, and he is playing against Tom Juan. He might decide to gamble and raise. He just calls. These players are extraordinarily deep. Um, Ivy has a very easy call here with a six suited. You could look to raise and kind of take the initiative. Maybe Tom Juan is goes crazy and three bets to flop, and you can four bet and, and take it down but for the most part this is just a standard call let tom potentially keep bluffing or give yourself the opportunity to make a hand with a six suited there's also the really nice possibility of tom having a hand like aces or ace king and they turn the queen so they both have the nut straight yet ivy has the free roll and they can get a bunch of money in so you definitely don't want to force out a hand like let's say potentially aces or potentially ace deuce of spades good call by ivy and we head to the turn Three of spades on the turn. About as blank as you can get. 162,000 in the pot already. The man with nine high bets 123-2. We head to the offsuit three turn and Tom decides to keep firing. Now by betting here, he's representing a set, some two pair hands, some straights, it's questionable whether a hand like aces or ace-king would want to grow the pot this big on this particular board, but he's certainly got that strong pre-flop three-betting range, and it connects really well on this board. He keeps firing despite having very little equity, uh, as we can see. Tom has always been a very aggressive player and fearless. Internet phenom Tom Dwan has turned the poker world upside down over the last few years. Tom Dwan is uh, brilliant. The most aggressive player I've seen in many years. Annoying. 
inconvenient. The best action guy I play with in the last three years. Slightly awkward and, and uh, unique. I'm gonna avoid that question. Tom Dwan is uh, the most fun poker player to watch and uh, the toughest to play against. That was more than 10 words though. Phil Ivey has a big decision now. He feels he's behind. He's trying to figure out if he can get paid off if he makes his hand. If a diamond comes, can he get any money out of Juan? If a jack comes, is he just going to split the pot? He decides to call. Phil Ivey sitting there with a six suited once again, I think, has an easy call. Uh, I don't like raising at this point. I think take the river in position and figure it out. Uh, and that's what he does. I think he's calling for two reasons. One, he feels he can get paid off if he hits his hand. And two, there's a small chance that Juan is completely airballing. Ivy makes a pair of sixes on the river. Misses the flush, misses the straight. There's $408,700 out there. This is the first time all season that the table has been completely quiet. He is loading the gun. He fires 268,200. How much is that and how much do you have left? I have about 280 left. Juan's voice was a little shaky there. He did not want to hear any inquiries from Phil Ivey. Offsuit six hits the river, and Tom decides to fire once again. This time, 268,200 into a pot of around 400K. Um, Ivy takes some time, and, you know, he just has this pair of sixes here. It's a really bad bluff catcher. You don't want to have the ace of diamonds so much. The six doesn't help you. Uh, basically, Tom's representing a hand like sets, two pair, straights, potentially a hand as thin as aces or ace king, which, you know, Ivy does block a little bit. It's unclear if Tom would bet this sizing with those hands, and I think one of the interesting aspects of this is, you know, Phil Ivey asks Tom how much the bet was and how much is left behind, and Tom has about, he's doing that to get a read, by the way, Tom has about 280K behind. So Tom had about 550K before betting this river, and with that stack size at, at 400K in the middle, you could just shove. Now, again, we're looking at a classic hand. There are not as many overbets going on back in those days, although Tom was one of the first to implement overbets and actually teach me the concept of overbetting, especially in spots like this, where you know you don't want to give them the opportunity to put in a raise and make more money when you're value betting a hand that wants to get called but doesn't want to get raised. And that logic is is roughly correct, but it's essentially by leaving them some money behind, you give them the opportunity to leverage a value raising range uh, by adding in some additional bluffs and kind of capturing more equity into the pot. Anyways. <sighs> I don't know if Phil Ivey's reading into that or if he's just got a general feel. Phil Ivey is an excellent, excellent reader, not just uh, of people, but also a hand reader. And he goes through this long tank here with a terrible bluff catcher. He even comments about how bad of a bluff catcher it is and how people won't believe it. Well, wow. what do you see how long, what do you, what do you see what I have that I'm taking this long, long? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to believe is. this one. And I can sense in just watching him and having known him a little bit since then, he really wants to call and he really thinks his hand is good. But then he kind of shifts from feeling into logic and he starts to think, well, how does Tom have some kind of bluff here? Like how many hands do I actually beat? Is he really betting twice after three betting with like ace, deuce, no draw? How is he able to have a hand worse than ace six here in that preflop three betting range? on the king queen 10 flop. He goes from thinking, you know, I feel like this is a bluff to I can't think of that many bluffs that he would have. And this is the correct way to think through a hand in my opinion. You make your reads on the opponent, um, including sometimes a gut feeling. And you think, well, it's more likely than usual he's bluffing here because of whatever reasons Phil Ivey's noticing, whether it's physical, uh, whether it's just intuition that he can't explain. But then you have to go into the, the regular hand reading part. So this is a spot where Ivy thinks it's very hard for Tom to be bluffing, logically, given the board texture. And so you you take that range that doesn't have a lot of potential bluffs and has a lot of potential value bets in it. Um, and then you reduce the frequency of the value bets or you increase the frequency of the bluffs a little bit. But I think that that feeling, that intuition, 
wasn't enough in this spot to outweigh the logic of the situation, outweigh the fact that Tom has so many value bettable hands that he plays this way. And Ivy probably doesn't have enough information on Tom to be confident enough in that read to make this hero call. This is going to be the sickest call of all time. Juwan really looks nervous. What Phil Ivey's trying to decide is, is he really nervous or is he acting nervous? The truth is he is really nervous. Tom, I think, uh, has a very good hand to bluff with once he gets to the river. You know, he's going to run into a lot of Queen Jack, King Jack, Jack 10 that have to call a few times, but then have, you know, kind of a weak bluff catcher. As we can see here, Ivy might have called with those because with a six, he's considering calling. Um, but having gotten here, I like Tom's bluff. Uh, it's really impressive to see Ivy tank with specifically a six of diamonds in this spot um, or any hand that week, I should say. But in the end, his rational mind outweighed his gun instinct, and he decided to make a fold that you know, I can't fault him for, obviously. It's a relatively standard fold. You need a really, really strong read to do something otherwise. And uh, props to both of them on a really fun hand. Juwan looks worse. Can't be nothing. Except for that. Can't be nothing except what Tom Juwan has. Okay. Oh, that one hurt. God, I my think he's eyes bluffing. hurt so I really think give he's him bluffing. 5,000 if you can't show your ace higher better. Give him, give really, him a free roll for 1,000 on ace higher better if you can't. I really think he's well, bluffing. The light's just like... What's wrong with your eyes? Because I was staring at the same card the whole time, and something about the lights must really... You had the hand. Let's go. Dur, you're a very interesting human. I'm glad to be in your <laughs> orbit, you know? I, mean, I know we don't connect what? a lot, but it's nice to be around, like... Like, I must have just been at a weird light angle. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this. I will see you next time for another video. Let me know what you thought, and uh, I will see you in the comments, and I will see you next week. Take care.